Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. If you're managing Apple devices within an organization today, it's likely that you've enrolled that organization in Apple Business Manager or ABM. No matter if you're syncing ABM with Microsoft in Microsoft Intune for MDM capabilities, or if you're using a third party like Jam for Adagy, it's likely you work out of ABM just to manage all of the Apple IDs within an organization. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate the user creation from Azure Active Directory into the ABM portal so that you can automate that provisioning event. And additionally, when a user leaves, they can be removed from the ABM portal as well. It's very important just to help make sure that we prevent access to the applications or iCloud accounts in which users have been removed. And additionally, creates that automation from an operational overhead standpoint. The steps I'm going to be showing you today is commonly known as skin provisioning or SCIM and many of you have probably heard of that if you're familiar with configuring SSO applications. Before we dive in, just a quick note that I would recommend you check out my video on federation with Azure Active Directory as well too with ABM. It's just a prerequisite I think is necessary in order to create that enterprise application that we'll see here within Microsoft Active Directory. And then additionally, it allows for single sign-on access into ABM with the Microsoft credentials as well too. So just an overall powerful experience and it's definitely something I would check out. So I'll link that video below. As always though, if you want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. And so within this portal, I have these lists of users here that I've manually created, but let's go ahead and go through the steps of actually setting up the directory sync. I'll go under the preferences section here and then under preferences, I'll go to directory sync and then I'll click on enable. It's giving me a warning here about saving this token and only being able to access it for four days. So we we'll wanna copy both of these fields, maybe just put them in a notepad for right now. Next, what we're going to do is close this field and you're actually gonna pivot into the Azure Active Directory portal in your Microsoft account. So we've been here before, but this again is aad.portal.azure.com. And we can go in here as a global administrator within this tenant. And I can click into the Active Directory section here. And from here, I can go into the Enterprise Application section. Now, you may have a list of applications here, but if you sort by name, you're going to search for Apple Business Manager here, and it should be already in your tenant if you already set up the federation. So if we click into this here, we can go in and we can see various aspects about this application, but the section that we're going to want to configure is in the provisioning section here. And so we're going to go ahead and click on Get Started. And for the provisioning mode, we're going to switch this to automatic. Here is where we're going to put in that tenant URL and secret token that we just grabbed from the Apple Business Manager portal. Once I have these pasted in, I can click on test connection. I'll get my authorization message here. And additionally, as an admin within my Microsoft account, I get this email that basically just mentions that the SCIM token setup is complete. I'm going to go ahead and click on save here. And this will update my provisioning settings. And once you do that, you'll get a couple of additional settings that you can modify down here at the bottom. This first section is related to your attribute mappings here, and most likely you're going to leave these at the default settings. So it's basically just telling you that it is enabled and that it can update, create, and delete user records with the following attributes in your Apple Business Manager account. So this is great because it creates your users when you create them in Azure Active Directory, and it can also remove them when a user leaves an organization as well. The other section here is related to a few other settings such as the email notification when a failure occurs. So I recommend setting this to a distribution group or something that's shared that's not related to an individual user. And then you could also set up prevent accidental deletion. So this is basically just allowing you to set a threshold so that users aren't accidentally deleted if you are removing them from one of these portals. And then for the scope, it's probably the most important that you want to configure, which is to say that you only want assigned users or groups to be provisioned and deprovisioned from the skin provisioning that's available, or you want to just sync all your users and groups that you have within the platform. So by default, it's going to do this only assigned users and groups, which I agree with just because it's likely that not all users in your organization are using Macs. But if that's the case, it may be easier for you just to say that I want to sync all users. So if we go in here and we go into the 
section for provisioning, we can see that the initial cycle has not yet run. But what I wanna do is go under the users and groups section here because right now I just have myself as a user that's within the scope of being synced. So here I can click on add a new user and group just for the sake of management, you know, you likely want to add all these groups into like a Mac users group, just so you don't have to add every single user at a time when they're onboarded, just to automate this process a little bit more for you. In this case though, for the purposes of demo, I'm just going to add a single user, which is Bruce Banner, who's not already in AVM. I'm gonna go ahead and select him and click on assign. Now that I have that user here, I'm gonna go back into the provisioning section here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on start provisioning. This will go ahead and kick off the initial cycle According to Apple's documentation, the sync can run every 40 minutes or so. So that's about the rough time frame when you think about adding new users to the organization and seeing them show up in ABM. But you could also choose to provision on demand as you can see here as well. Back in the ABM portal, this only took about a minute to actually show up, but I can see now that Bruce Banner has been added and he's a new user here. I get this little notification, which is pretty nice to see as well too, just from the standpoint of uh, admin perspective. And by default here, you can see if you go under the details section that it, he is added as a staff role within the organization, which is great because I don't want to give everybody any type of elevated privileges here as well. You can also recognize that the account status is a new account, meaning he hasn't signed in yet. So if it goes to iCloud now, he now has this B banner at t-365.com as his managed Apple ID. Lastly, here under the preference section, we can go ahead and we can see in the directory sync, it was enabled and it has the last sync timestamp for us as well too. So you can always come back and edit this, but a lot of the work that you're gonna be doing to manage this connection is actually gonna be on the Azure AD side. Okay guys, that's everything that I had for you in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space.